hi, I'm, I'm Rachel. Um, I'm struggling with this a little bit. Um, so I'm not from the Closure community. I don't know Closure. So I'm somewhat behind you, Connie, right now. Um, but I thought I'd probably better explain who I am and where I, where I come from, my history, so that it's going to make some sense when I talk about open source projects. Um, I'm from Kings Lynn. Well, I'm from Yorkshire, but I live in Kings Lynn in Norfolk now. Uh, so I rode down on my motorbike. Uh, I tend to ride around quite a lot on the motorbike. Uh, that's in Bulgaria. Uh, I get around a little bit. Uh, traveling around, that's just from my tracker on my motorbike. Uh, <laughs> get the data as you get the data off it down into Morocco, down into uh, Greece. Um, I got turned away from the border in Turkey because they were having a coup at the time and they didn't want to let people in. Hey ho. Um, so I started my career not in computing. I actually used to teach fencing. And I've got to say, teaching fencing to a bunch of seven-year-olds is actually even more scary than being on this stage. <laughs> I went somehow from there to work for the Ministry of Defense and into marketing in pharmaceuticals. Uh, and there I got into and learned about an open source project called Drupal, uh, which is used for quite a lot of things. You've probably heard of it, I hope. Um, and I got involved in actually contributing in my own little way to Drupal Core and actually learning how to involve myself uh, at that time, make suggestions of patches uh, and PRs into Drupal Core and generally learn how to do that. Uh, I went from there and realized that what I really enjoyed wasn't so much doing that myself, although I do enjoy it, to be fair, on occasions, but actually helping other people. So this is at a conference in, I think this was in Amsterdam, uh, where I was helping mentor new people into contributing and teaching people, how on earth do you do this? What's it all about? Uh, quite a while ago, my hair was yet another color. It's been all sorts of colors, actually. Um, so I also got involved in realizing that it's important to talk about different groups of people in, te in technology. Uh, and I, I got angry with somebody who was saying there were no female role models in computing. Uh, and so I made an effort for every talk I did in 2017, I did a slide about a different uh, woman in tech who was a massive role model. And Sophie Wilson is somebody who affects all of you every day of your life because she was the person who developed the instruction set of the processor, the ARM processor in your phone. Um, so I kind of got quite angry about that and I'm trying to ignore the fact that there's a little naughty word up on that slide. <laughs> Um, so, I, I also got involved in helping other people in the community, in the Drupal community. So, I got involved in a thing called the Community Working Group, which is a small group of volunteers in the Drupal community who help, how shall we say, help people deal with disagreements between themselves and interesting behaviors, etc. Okay, I learned so much, so much about communities and so much about people doing that work. It's absolutely brilliant. I don't know if there's an equivalent enclosure. Is there? Anyone know? Of a group that actually help resolve differences? Might be useful. I don't know. Okay. Um, but it was absolutely really great. Uh, and in fact, we were, it's funny because um, <laughs> Tobias was talking about sea lions earlier. Of course, uh, we have sea lions in the Drupal community as well. And one of the most amazing things is to actually sit there and help people move from that position. 
uh, into actually becoming valuable, incredible members of the community, and it feels fantastic when you do it. Uh, it's really amazing. And indeed, we give awards for people who do great things and exemplify good behavior. Because if you show people doing good things and you make a big deal about the positive things, people notice that. So this is, uh, this is uh, Leslie Glynn. Uh, well, that doesn't work. Um, who was the winner of the Aaron Winborn Award this year at DrupalCon, which is an award given to people who really exemplify the type of behavior we want. It really matters. Do that. It's a great thing to do. I got involved in organizing people. <laughs> so this is organizing some people who eventually ran, I think, called Drupal Europe uh, last year, which was a major conference in Europe. Uh, quite how I managed to get them all actually putting things on the board rather than moaning was another matter. Uh, but it was fun. So while I'm doing Drupal, I also got involved and in speaking with uh, people about the sustainability of open source projects. And I got involved in a thing called Sustain OSS. Um, and this is a group in San Francisco where we went to the GitHub headquarters and had a one-day meeting, which was kind of fun, with lots of different people there. Uh, from lots of different open source projects. Uh, and in fact, the meeting in London last year was where I met Martin. And I don't know, where is he on there? I think he's, he's here. He looks really young there. It was only last year. Okay. Eventually, I was employed by the Drupal Association as their community liaison. And I've been doing that for 18 months kind of starting to work out what it means now. Uh, so helping lots of different people in the Drupal community work together and move things forwards. The Drupal Association's mission is to support the project where 19 people, there's only 19 of us, who work purely to support the project. Drupal isn't like uh, most open source projects. There isn't a single... Um, company behind it. Everybody gets involved. It's largely the community that make it work. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, but we are lucky because there might be only 19 of us, but there are thousands of people who contribute to the project, which is fantastic, really amazing. So that's a little background about how, how I'm doing the things and working in open source every day. But there are things I've learned along the way. Things I thought I knew, and then I realized I really didn't. And so I picked 10, that 10 things that I thought I knew. Or other people have said to me, because they thought they knew them too. Now, when you have beliefs, as Yulia said, you can get quite emotionally attached to them. So it's quite difficult to change your minds and reassess them. Uh, so take these into account. I might say things here. They may not be true in closure, but hopefully it'll give you something to think about. Okay, first one. And I hear this over and over and over again. And in fact, our own project lead, Dries Bjartart, is terribly guilty of saying this and assuming that people know this. You don't need permission. In an open source project, you don't need permission. You can just go and do something. Seems reasonable, yeah? Well, actually, what we found is they might not need permission, but quite a lot of people in the community want to hear that they've got permission to go do something. Be that to set up a new working group to look at how we organize events, be that how we uh, improve our diversity and inclusion, be that whatever. People feel they need to hear that they have permission quite often. I find myself weirdly sometimes saying, you've got permission, and I feel quite weird saying that, but as long as they've, because they don't need it, actually, they've heard it, and then they can make, they can actually do what they want to do, okay? That happens a lot. I mean, this was a, uh, we use Slido when I do a, um, 
a Q&A with Dries Biaitar at DrupalCon. And this was one of the questions that came up. So Darren was asking, how do you feel about people waiting for you to endorse community initiatives? And Dries is like, well, just go do them. And it's like, no, yeah, people want to hear it. OK. <laughs> An open source community is made up of developers, just like me. I actually was a developer for quite a while. Actually, a community is made up of many roles. Who here is primarily not a developer? Yeah, you see, there's quite a few people. Yeah, OK. So it needs so many roles. It doesn't work without them. You, you need to make an open source project progress and become better and maintain and sustain itself. You need all sorts of things. You need project managers. You need people to mentor new people into the project and help them grow. You need people who document things. Without your documentation, no one's going anywhere. Okay? You need organizers, people like me. Okay? You even need people that market it. Who markets closure? Yeah? Is it just the organizing company, or do you all do it? Do you organize between yourselves? How are you going to market the product that you build your tools upon? Maybe you could. Uh, in Drupal recently, we've just been working on a pitch deck. Agencies from actually all around the world have been working on a pitch deck purely about the product, Drupal, and where it's used and having use cases in there. And there's slides and slides and slides here. Great Ormond Street, occupational therapist, there's NASA up there, all sorts of stuff. Okay. <laughs> we've even had a situation where recently we needed bakers because we built a example website into Drupal Core. So if you download Drupal Core and go to install it, it says, do you want to install a basic profile, a, a fancy one, or do you want to actually install a demo profile? And we built a demo, and it's actually a, a recipe site. Yeah, it's kind of like BBC Food, but our own recipes. Uh, and I was changing one of the recipes, so I was adding some photos and we had people who dedicated their time to cooking the recipes and taking photographs. And they got commit mentions for doing that work. Okay? You to, you know, that, that whole thing, the Umami Food website, is uh, great. And we've got people who've never coded in their lives and have no intention of coding, but they have helped move the product forwards. OK. <laughs> we communicate in English. And it does say on the Drupal website that we will do all our communications in English. And people kind of do. But English means different things to different people. Um, one of the things that I was doing in the community working group is we'd have meetings and we'd talk about the, the issues that came up. And the George, the kind of head person at the time, he, he, was say, he was saying, oh, we'll table this issue, and I'm getting ready to, to talk about it. And he's like, why are you talking about it? We've just said we'll table it. For me in the UK, tabling an issue means let's talk about it. For him in the US, it means let's put it to the side and talk about it later. Same word, yeah, <laughs> completely different meanings. Uh, one of the things that we've done in our issue queues which I'm trying to get GitHub to do the same, actually, is we have, whenever you go into your profile, you can set in your profile on the drupal.org website, what is your primary language? OK? Uh, for me, that's English, obviously. Well, Yorkshire, anyway. Uh, for many other people, it's not. They can all speak in English, but it's not their primary language. Now, if you can see that on somebody's profile, I can see here that uh, Andy Post, uh, his primary language is Russian. I can see that Gabor, one of our main contributors, his primary language is Hungarian. Yeah? It means that when you're reading somebody's comments, you can put them into some context. We've added a few other things as well. So we've added a, uh, a pronoun and, and uh, you know, sort of what people's pronouns are. And it's not preference, by the way. It's not pronoun preferences. It's, it's their pronouns. And where they are, where they live, 
yeah? Uh, because that way you've got an idea. They're not going to reply for a few hours because they're in Hungary. They're not awake, <laughs> okay? So it's really useful. Also, you get some culture behind what they're saying. So different, different people will um, express things in a different way. It's not 100% simple to say that some people in some countries are more direct than others, but it, it's a bit of a start. It gives you an idea that when someone's being really direct in a comment, is it because they're being direct or is that just the way they talk? Yeah? Give some context. I imagine for a lot of people here that don't have to think about safety when you're traveling, okay? And think about, am I safe at this conference? There's a reason why we do things like codes of conduct and we have mechanisms at conferences is even if you think that you've made a safe environment, that does not mean people who are, all of the people who are there are feel safe. You have to make an effort to make people feel safe. And actually, I've got to say this conference, the people that have run Heart of Closure, I've done a fantastic job of that, by the way. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> okay. Another one is, <laughs> a job well done is thanks enough. Okay. Well, it kind of is. It's sometimes enjoy enjoyable to do something and think, actually, do you know what? That was really cool. One of my favorite uh, commits to Drupal Core was actually entirely removing code. Um, I managed to remove more code than I added, and that was like, this is the best commit I've ever made. Um, it's just the way I work. <laughs> okay. If Somebody has done something, it's always worth saying thank you. And if you're saying thank you, say it publicly. Okay? May, you know, actually go out there and say, thank you. You did something that helped us. Brilliant thank you. Okay? And that goes also for all of the different ways of contributing. So many of you here will have committed or, 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 or proposed code to the various parts of the closure community. I'm assuming probably quite a lot of you have actually done that. Is that true? Yeah, quite a few. Okay. But how many of you, who, who here has been involved in organizing this event? Yeah? You've been, you, you did that. Thank you. You made something really incredible. Yeah? <laughs> what you did is of equal value to committing code into the closure core. I don't know what you call it, actually. I should have checked this, shouldn't I? Closure core. Well, I'll call it that. Yeah? It's of equal value. Find a way of giving your thanks in the same way. So we set up, in Drupal, we set up projects, uh, Git repos, yeah, where we can have issues for camps, our conferences. Yeah? And then we create issues and we give mentions. We give Git, Git mentions saying, thank you to all of the people who've got involved, yeah? So they get recognized equally by all of the, you know, by people who think, well, these people are incredible because they're writing the code. That's more important than anything else. No, it's not. Everything is important, okay? Okay, <laughs> having said that, don't forget, thanks doesn't pay the mortgage. Uh, it doesn't pay the rent. It doesn't stop you getting hungry. Th 
running projects is hard work. Maintaining extras onto closure. I know there's a lot of people here uh, that do that, um, running little modules, doing things, doing talks, doing all those things. It's hard work. It takes time. If you can find a way, I don't know, uh, I'm going to say, it's not, I've forgotten his name now, it's not Tobias, uh, uh, Closure is Together. David, sorry, I'm really sorry. Um, what he's talking about in, in Closure is Together, is there something that you can also do to make sure that not just code contributors, but everybody else is considered when it comes to actually giving money? And this GitHub thing, this sponsor button that they're doing is really interesting. We're doing something similar in Drupal at the moment. Um, I have a feeling that's going to become a big deal. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I was trying to work out what to type on this one, so I just typed into Google, all developers don't die. And this is what it, repli it replied with a joke. All developers don't die, they just lose their memory. <laughs> oh, yes, they do. This is a friend of mine, JP Stacy. He complaining of a cough, bad cough, uh, got on a flight to Spain, died. Yeah, he was a incredible person. Who, he was an incredible mentor for other people. He mentored me in Drupal. He mentored many other people. He wrote incredible documentation. He was always there to answer questions. Yeah. All developers do die. You've got people in your community who won't be around forever. And it, everyone has a life cycle. You can't be in a project forever. It might not literally be dying, but people move on. Yeah? And that's perfectly okay. And if they're moving on without dying, that's per perfectly healthy. It's a perfectly okay for people to come into a community, grow, contribute, and then feel that they want to move on. That's fine. Don't worry about that. That's okay. What you can do is make sure that you build that into how the community works. And if you've got leaders in your community, and leaders aren't people in specific positions, they're people who exhibit leadership behavior, you know, mentoring others, creating good example, all those types of things. If you are a leader in your community, your first job, your first job is to start thinking about your successor. Yeah? You need to start thinking, okay, who am I going to be bringing to do my job when I'm not around? Because that means that you don't get stressed about doing something that you're starting to not enjoy anymore, okay? If you're not enjoying something now, and it's, it's voluntary work, you need to be looking now for who's going to do it after you. It's your biggest, most important thing, okay? Before that happens, ideally, yeah? Okay? It's funny, actually, this picture I used here it, this is the mentors we had at one of our big DrupalCon events. Now, we have one day for, it's a four-day conference, and we have the fourth day, we have a room where we invite people who've never coded, never contributed to Drupal before, code, and we get a load of mentors, people who've said, yeah, I can show other people how to do this. We train them up as mentors, we show them what to do, how to work with people, and then we get people in and we try and introduce people to working and contributing to Drupal. Now, I used to, I used to, I used to run this. I used to be with, uh, back, in, back in the years. I used to help run this. So I identified um, Ellie here at, at the top um, who took over from me. Yeah? In the same way that the person who did it before me identified me, and we moved on, yeah? So I, I explained to Ellie, this is how you run our mentoring days, etc. And she's doing an amazing job. And she's already identifying 
her successor. And in fact, one of the things we do actually is because they're all in blue t-shirts as, as mentors. Uh, and the thing with mentors is some of them are doing it for the first time. So that's quite scary. So what you'll find is on their shirts, some of them have got tape. And that's identifying, I've done this before. So that the mentors who've never done it before can turn around to another mentor and be mentored. It's kind of weird. It kind of works. It's a little bit meta. <laughs> okay? We don't explain to the, to the people coming into the room what that's for. They don't need to know. Okay. <laughs> We're all able to participate. It just takes some effort to learn i.e., anyone can contribute to a project. You just need to sit down and put the effort in. Yeah? Anyone can do it. It's not entirely true. Yeah? Some people just have more spare time than others. Yeah? Some people have to worry about where their money's coming from less than others. Some people don't have to work two jobs. There are parts of our communities yeah, groups in our communities, that particularly a lot of underrepresented groups, who just don't have as much time as some of you. Yeah, it's harder for them to have the free time. <laughs> Actually, I was looking for an in, of, of, of an image to signify this, and I thought, oh, laundry. I'll look for laundry. People doing laundry. Some parts of our world tend to do more laundry than others. And I typed laundry into Creative Commons image search. It was ages until I could find an image that didn't have a woman in the, in the picture. And I was determined not to have a woman in the picture because laundry, women. Okay. A, yeah, that kind of wound me up a little bit. And so some groups, you need to give them extra space to do stuff because having a diverse and included community makes you a better project. It makes a better product. There is nothing worse than having all of your team, and by that I mean that everyone contributing to Clojure or Drupal, all being the same. Because if everyone's the same as you, one, it's weird, Two, it's boring. And three, there are things you won't know. Okay? And so you will make a worse product. You need to make sure, for your own benefit, that you take extra steps to get a wider, more diverse, more unusual group of people to work with. It takes effort, and you have to do it. Yeah? Uh, in, in Drupal, uh, they're currently doing a thing called the Speaker Diversity Workshop that our DD&I group are organizing. It's fantastic. So they're actually reaching out to underrepresented groups, people in underrepresented groups, and saying, hey, would you like to get some better knowledge about how to do speak speaking at events? Yeah? Especially so that we can make sure more people on this stage, well, not this one, but a Drupal one, uh, women, LGBT, uh, people of color, whatever. Yeah? Okay? It matters. Because otherwise, you're going to end up watching the same old people all the time. No one wants that. No one wants to see themselves up on stage. Okay. I've heard this over and over and over again. When you use open source, you have a duty to contribute. No, you don't have a duty. You have an opportunity, okay? Contributing to an open source project is not your duty. If you're doing it out of duty, stop. Do it because you want to and you're getting something out of it. And you will, absolutely, yeah? It will help increase your visibility in the project and therefore to clients. You will learn how to write better code or do better marketing or do better project management because you're working with a wider variety of people, whatever. But don't ever impress on somebody or especially other companies 
you should be contributing. Yeah? Give them the opportunity to contribute instead. Yeah? For one, if nothing else, it's a bit more kind of positive. Okay. <laughs> Volunteers can be told what to do. This brings me back to teaching fencing to seven-year-olds. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you can imagine you, you, you give uh, a bunch of seven-year-olds um, a foil kind of like that long, and you go, you can't just go, well, hey, go for it. Yeah? You have to have some control. But also, with kids, if they're going to enjoy something, you need to guide them. You have to give them reasons to do and for them to feel that they want to do what you want them to do. Okay? So, you give them reasons that are great in their minds to be under some vague level of control. And it's the same with open source communities as well. And I, I just saw this little image and I loved it. This is, yes, it's a urinal. Uh, <laughs> in the porcelain, there is printed a fly. And apparently that works great. Whatever. <laughs> okay. What's in it for them? If it's keeping people amused, works. Yulia uh, summed this up really well uh, this morning. Yesterday morning, when she started the whole thing, uh, she talked about the carpenter and the gardener. A carpenter tells, you know, has a, has a fixed idea of what they're doing. A gardener creates an environment where the plants that she wants to grow stand a better chance of growing than the plants that she doesn't want to grow, the weeds. Yeah? They're all equally good plants in terms of being a plant, but it's not what Yulia wants. So you create the environment, and it's pretty much what I do as a job. It's, there's a thing called nudge theory that's kind of around it, and pretty much you can create environments. I've been wanting a group recently to form around helping us spread the message of how to do best practice in event management within Drupal. And I created the environment where that group would form. It's now forming. I'm quite pleased. So I feel really quite clever at the moment. Um, it's, it's doing really well. But you don't tell people what to do. The volunteers, they'll just tell you to get lost. OK. <laughs> I've talked a lot about Drupal. And Drupal is a big project. It's a mature project. It's been around since 2001. Uh, we have, I think it's about six figures, you know, about 100 and some thousand active users. Uh, active contributors, I mean, people who are actually contributing to the project. About 100,000. Uh, there's more people than that, obviously, use it. It's mature, it's got a lot of things, it's got a lot of bits and pieces in place, but we don't know it all. And in fact, actually, great ideas come from everywhere. A couple of weeks ago, I was on the Drupal Association Slack, internal kind of Slack channel that we have, speaking to my events person and saying, oh my God, you should see this thing they've done for, clo for Heart of Closure. Now, a couple of weeks ago, you had a thing where especially new people could join a chat channel and speak one-to-one -one with different people and paired up. I have never seen that before. It's brilliant. We've stolen it. <laughs> okay? We think it's fantastic. Okay? I'm still learning. As far as I'm concerned, I've been in open source for 13 years in Drupal. Uh, I'm still learning. I'm still at the very beginning of learning. Okay? There's so much more I can learn. I learned this week, and in fact, I've just tweeted about it. I learned this weekend that uh, the real power of this single track conference, because everybody here, when, when we go for lunch and when we go out at night, we have this thing where we've all got the same experience to talk about. And it's amazing. It's all of these people actually can speak about something 
I, I expressed it like, it used to be what TV was like. Um, you know, you'd get a series on TV, and when I was a kid, you know, we'd watch, God, the young ones. Uh, <laughs> I am old. Uh, we'd watch the young ones, and we'd go into, back into school, and we, that's what we'd talk about. Yeah? That's less, less happens now, because you've got things like Netflix, where people watch things at different times. And you've got like a thousand channels, you've got on demand. People don't go into school and talk about the same thing on the same day. There's not the excitement anymore. And this, I like this format. I really, really, really like this format. So I've learned something new there. I'm kind of interested over the last few weeks to hear of community things that you've learnt about, yeah? Um, is there anything that you have learnt recently about open source communities that you'd like to tell anybody else about? And I can get a microphone if someone wants to stick their hand up. Anything that you've learnt recently? No? We'll keep quiet then. Tell you what instead. Heart of Closure community learning. Tweet about it. Tell me what you've learned. In fact, tell all of us. Tell us. Community learning. Tell us what you've learned recently that I can learn about as well. And all of these other people can learn about. Yeah? Because we learn together. No one knows everything. Okay? It's a big deal. There are always more lessons. Maybe another time. I want to do something on leadership behaviors one day. Okay? But I think... Five minutes early. <laughs> okay. I want to say thank you. I've come from outside the Clojure community. This is my first experience of Clojure. And through the very start of being asked to come here through being coached to how things were going to work, having all of my travel sorted, well, you know, sort of knowing that the hotel was there and, and so on, through speaking, having all of the bits and pieces ready, through the whole organization of everything, through the warmth that all of you have given me, this has been an amazing place to be. You have a lot to be proud of, and thank you. Um, I think I'll leave it there, even though I'm a little bit early. But um, feel free to ask me questions afterwards, if you have any. But uh, thank you very much. <laughs>